Phil Orlando's in the chair. He's just come in. Thank you so much, Phil. You uh, have billions of dollars in assets under management. We're watching a market that uh, really started to hiccup and then kind of sat down pretty immediately on this news. As an investor, you waited out? From a credibility standpoint, I think Mueller's doing exactly the right thing. The market has to find out what's there, if anything. Uh, let the grand jury decide. Let Mueller decide. As investors, we don't think there's anything there. So we're going to wait to see if there is some smoking gun or some information that would lead us to conclude that this is bigger than we think. So sit tight. Sit tight. At this well, point, uh, just work on fundamentals. Okay, but why, Charlie, why would Mueller, right. simply because of timing and hearing that he may be fired, push something forward? Isn't his reputation and legacy more important to him? And therefore, wouldn't he say, I'm only bringing something forward if there's some there there? Yeah, I mean, listen, let's just, two, two points I'd like to make to, to, uh, to what he, Phil. Phil just said. Um, think of if you're an investor. Think of the worst case scenario, and then plan out. If Donald Trump gets indicted, <laughs> the worst case. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Mike Pence will be president. You still have a Republican Congress. You have fairly stable fiscal policy. You're still going to have a Republican in the Oval Office for the next four years. So don't don't expect like radical fiscal policy changes to the downside of your investments. It's just not going to happen. And, and um, Charlie, it, to it, that point, right. the, the market's perception is that if something like that were to happen, that would actually be a positive in right, terms of getting would, fiscal policy right, passed. Because Donald Trump is considered an erratic guy, and my, Mike Pence might be able to do something. Exactly. Right? And so I get you. I, I'm with you on that. The and, second and part is wait, this. Wait, this is breaking. Right? We just got a statement from President. Trump's right. lawyer, Tob, Ty Cobbs, Ty on Cobbs. this, and he is saying, telling Fox News, we favor anything that brings this investigation to a swift conclusion. Okay, so now it plays it, off of what Phil just said. Right. Good. So maybe they're going to they're doing it faster. Um, listen, my my listen. There's always politics here, and this is where I just we don't know. Robert Mueller is under pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay, he impaneled the grand jury, which means the pressure that's put on him by the White House and by others, it's almost impossible to remove him right now. He's not stepping down, probably, unless you find that he was really, really, he finds a massive conflict. You would expect someone like Robert Mueller would not put, his, put this out there unless... Maybe we can sort of bring in there, some intraday there, charts there as we're is, talking, because it's right. interesting to follow, because yeah, the Dow is now up above 22,000. Here's the one thing I worry about. There's an old saying uh, from a New York judge that you can get a grand jury to indict, indict a ham sandwich. Yep. And if you ask any good lawyer, they will tell you that a grand jury is the antithesis of democracy because there's no other side represented. Only prosecutors are there. They pre there are no rules of evidence. You can present anything any way you want, and you can shade it any way you want in an incriminating way because there's no defense attorney there to cross-examine and challenge witnesses. And so one is always concerned with what may turn out to be a renegade and unduly influenced grand jury panel. Although that is generally not Robert Mueller's, um, I mean, it's given to you to be devil's advocate, I'm not, I'm, I don't hold water from Robert Mueller, that's generally not his M.O. Right. And, and one other thing we should just point out here, he's impaneling a grand jury on an investigation that, that involves the President of the United States. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is it's, it's pretty, pretty significant. stark, Blake, significant stuff. You, you just heard Ty Cobb's exact quote to, to Fox News saying, we favor anything that brings this to, to a conclusion. But the president will be in just a few hours on his way to West Virginia. And he'll face a very friendly crowd. That's what he tends to, to really face. I mean, we already saw the pictures there. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, but tell us what you think he will say about this. Well, there, here's a picture of, of the crowd. I think we just got our live picture back up. Uh, tell us what you think he will say in front of this crowd. Fake news or what do you think? I mean, the Wall Street well, Journal is our, our, our partner here. Yeah, so, so a couple of things on that, Liz. First off, this is a political rally. Right, so this is one of these more, one of the more freewheeling type events that the president engages in versus something that's more scripted off teleprompter or a White House thing. Yeah. Uh, so we could see the president uh, more engaged uh, with the crowd, I guess you could say tonight. But, but as we've seen from him throughout, he believes that this is a witch hunt. Okay. That is the phrase, those are the words that he uses, witch hunt. Okay. Now, whether he says that tonight or not, who knows? Okay. I guess we'll see in a few hours from now from West Virginia. But it is, um, I, I think it is important to note, Liz, that the White House here, clearly from the statement uh, by okay. Ty Cobb, who's yeah. been set up to kind of deal with all this, they didn't know that this was coming at all. Blake, thank you. Phil Orlando, uh, Market's coming we've got down. a market that, that's now starting to slightly come back.
uh, at least for the Dow. This is pretty much where we were right as we started the markets here. But um, earnings season, because Kraft is coming up next. That's a big earnings number after the bell that we're waiting for. What are you looking at? Uh, earnings season's been terrific. We're up 11% year over year in the second quarter. The f these six months, first and second quarter, the best six months of earnings in, in about six or seven years. Uh, it's a solid earnings period. GDP number was decent. The underlying fundamentals are fine. Uh, but look, we've had this 20% rally since the election. You're, you're susceptible to headline risk like this in a, in a period, August, September, that frankly isn't very kind of the market generally. Phil Orlando, Charlie Gasparino, big news here. And as we hear the closing bell, Tesla still ends up six and the Dow up above 22,000.